The thumb and wrist immobilizer is a very good application for scaphoid fractures, carpal tunnel syndromes, as well as proximal hand and thumb injuries or strains. To begin, measure from the tip of the middle finger two finger widths below the antecubital. Then, cut the desired length of the splint. Open the padding a bit and round all four edges of the substrate. Trim the overlapping padding, leaving a margin of padding on either side. You can open the padding completely. If you use a bucket of water or a faucet for water activation, you do not need to open it. Place the padding on the patient's volar arm and pinch the substrate at the web space of the thumb. For an easy custom-made splint, you mark a line from the middle of the substrate to the palmar crease and follow the palmar crease towards the smallest finger. Cut out the shape, leaving the thumb portion, and round the edges. Trim the overlapping padding, leaving a margin of padding on either side. Activate splint with water. Place the splint on the patient, making sure the splint lines up with the palmar crease. To find the right position, take the thumb portion and wrap it around the thumb. Then, anchor the splint at the wrist with the bandage and continue around the thumb two times. And through the web space twice. Proceed up the arm, overlapping by 50% of the bandage. For a strong immobilization, fixate the bandage with tape or a hook and loop fastener. Take the patient's hand in your hand to find the best molding position. The pressure of your palm of hand gives the splint the right modulation so the patient is still able to move the fingers, can even flex the thumb, and move the index finger and thumb to pick up objects. Position until the splint is in a rigid position. Mold as prescribed by the physician.